that's all. But the ego doesn't want it. It wants to stay in that very strong emotion because then it really is there in its full glory. Be it anger, be it guilt, be it poor me, be it attachment, be it desire, be it jealousy, be it whatever. And then the ego says, what? The Buddha says, you, I don't exist. Look, I'm right here in the middle of your chest, <laughs> taking up all the space. What are you saying, I don't exist? Yeah? So like this. So we can stop it at the pre-verbal action. You know? Or even before we have the whole thing going, like the whole uh, story and thoughts and all this. But still with the thoughts, when you start to watch the thoughts and you go to the story. It's also still time to stop. But it needs courage, it needs strength, it needs uh, mindfulness. It's not easy, isn't it? To remain like a piece of wood when you see big injustice. Yeah? But you see these big injustices, it's just me who is seeing it as an injustice. The person who is doing it, they don't see it as an injustice. They feel very justified to do these things. Isn't it? And also with us, you see, it's, I, as I say, I do workshops with children sometimes. And I see that children are very much disturbed by injustice when somebody is kind of, you know, put out of the group or something like that. So I usually tell them, it's very nice that you are disturbed by injustice, but when you, as you grow older, the problem with grown-ups is we are disturbed by injustice when it hits us. And we are not disturbed by injustice anymore when it is to our favor. When we would have to pay in order to make the thing just, we're not so interested in justice anymore. When it becomes very expensive, and when we have to give up a lot of our, of our comfort and security or whatever, then, uh, you know, then again, all these stories, why we have to do this and why we're doing it. So this is what I'm saying. Injustice is not being seen as injustice from both sides. This is why it's so difficult to kind of clear it up. Yeah? Samsara. Samsara, that, you know, dualistic thinking, dualistic view, then you look at it from two sides, it's like it looks different. I have to say. So it's the same for ethical conduct. As long as ethical conduct comes very cheap, doesn't cost anything, and it doesn't need much effort, we're very interested and we find it very inspiring. The moment it becomes expensive, and you see, you even find it funny. I'm not saying this as a joke. This is why the world is in such a mess. Because the moment that ethical conduct becomes expensive, our ego kicks in and it makes all the stories you can't afford it. You'll go out of existence or you'll become poor and you, you know, you will need uh, social help and all that. You know, it comes with all these horror stories, what the future will be. And the wisdom, the Dharma wisdom behind, but hey, think about karma. You will go to this poor state if you now continue not to pay what you should pay. Maybe not this life, but in another life. The wisdom of the Dharma wisdom is nowhere to be seen somehow. The fear of, you know, oh, no, no, I can't afford to be ethical now is so strong. So that we forget all the Dharma teachings about karma. And it shows us that we don't have trust in karma. We don't trust the law of cause and effect. Because otherwise we would pay whatever needs to be paid. I don't know if we already did the verse of you know, and he says, even if I lose, yeah, we did. I lose my wealth and my health and my wealth, but I will keep ethical conduct. Do we have that strength? I don't have it. So again, let's be honest, we don't have it. So it's with these verses that slowly, slowly we start to build it up. And then the world will become a better world. And as long as we act unethically, you know, that we have no right to point to other people's unethical conduct. You know, everybody's screaming about your prime minister. Are we 100% ethical? No, but no. No, no. no. But what do we do? <laughs> we excuse our own small non-ethical behavior, you know, saying, but well, look, I'm not doing what he's doing. Unethical behavior is unethical behavior. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm I know. Public personality. Huh? I'm not a public personality. I'm not in charge of many things that is in charge of. You're in charge of the whole world. <laughs> of all beings who have been your mothers as a Mahayana Buddhist. Okay, so I do whatever I can. <laughs> That's probably what he says also. No, but, but 
But I am failures. What? I am failures. I'm not saying that what you're doing is right. I'm, I'm not, I'm, uh, I'm I'm not saying that. I, don't, I know you don't like to hear these things. <laughs> yeah, so I'm, don't you feel I'm very provoking here? I know. So I know I'm doing it on my purpose. Happens. Yeah, so look at your reaction. How to find excuses, how to find, like, again, focusing on him and not on my non ethical behavior. This is what we're doing, so thank you very much, Ayala, because you exactly made the point. <laughs> you exactly made the point for everybody to see, and I'm including myself in there. We go, our anger goes out there, you know, instead of looking, hey, what, what, I, what, I, what am I doing? Uh, no, I, I'm doing both, I think. The yeah, good okay. is, I'm doing both. Yeah. I'm doing both. But your non ethical behavior is, for you, is for us, let, let's not focus on IA. <laughs> no, okay. exactly. Like, our unethical behavior seems much smaller than the uh, unethical behavior of a public figure, as you say. Yeah? But who will, who will bear the consequences of my eth unethical behavior? Me! But what I learned from Buddhism that you have to start acting in your whole small world. So I'm acting in my whole yeah. world and still trying to spread it out. Okay. But still you have still you have Yes. Okay. But I'm trying to improve. At least I'm, I'm trying to improve. Yeah, yeah. It's day fine. Is better. The, the lamas would say, don't try, do it. I do. <laughs> <laughs> trying doesn't get us anywhere. Okay, so here again it's like so the, the first steps that we did until the verse here now is like develop mindfulness and awareness. The mindfulness knowing that you want to be a person free of negative emotions. You don't want to act with negative emotions. You don't want to, to feed these habits that we have. Okay? So with awareness to see that when it's there, act. And here the acting is non-acting. Non-acting can also be acting. Okay? And can be very skillful acting, by the way, sometimes. We always have this urge, you know, Shempa makes us act, because Shempa is this, this urge to borrow, to do something, Some, sometimes beneficial, sometimes not beneficial. Shempa can also be beneficial. It is the energy that we have wanting to change something, but the first thing that we learn, and that's the most difficult one, to sit with it, not to bite the hook. Because intellectually we know behind the one there is a hook. But we, we still bite. And every time we bite, we make the urge stronger to go there. Yeah? Yeah, never should I look around distractedly for no purpose, which a resolute mind I should always keep my eyes cast downwards. This is what you learn in the Vipassana retreats. To stay with yourself, to, to bear the pain to stay with yourself. To bear the pain, not to smile at somebody because it opens up your heart. And then when your heart is open, also sometimes we don't really feel good, it's okay. Yeah? So in the Vipassana retreat, it's very painful not to communicate, to stay on. Then all your dirt is coming up. And then you feel terrible. You know? Like a mind in the retreat can be very inspiring because we talk about compassion and this, it's very nice. But the Vipassana retreat, blimey, is like, wow, you know, especially if it's a long one. I did two one-month retreat, Vipassana retreat, so it's like, wow. But it's great, because if you want to have a clean mind, the dirt needs to come out. We need to see it, you know. Very often we think we're much better than we are. Then yes. you start to see. When you are alone and no distraction, and, you know, then you start to see all the thoughts and all this. So, here it says, you know, it says, so never should I look around, distracted from a person. So we try to do it in, in um, you know, when these two guests maybe get up again and leave, because they, you know, you can, you can stay if you want, you can leave if you want, to leave them alone, again, you know, leave them alone. <laughs> they have a right to be here, just leave them alone. Don't, kind of, don't get distracted by them. So this is what I mean. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's good that you came in because it's just to show how easily you get distracted. Yeah. Like yesterday, did you notice when somebody put up this shield there? Yes. Nobody was listening to me anymore. <laughs> I was like, blah, blah, blah. Everybody's attention. I even said twice. I said, hello, hello. <laughs> Nothing. Yeah. So, so here now in the break, and while we're here, 
you learn to be focused. Because when we are focused, we start to see all these things. Then the mind, when we focus, the mind starts to clear. What we want, we want to have a stable and clear mind. The first step is to have it relaxed. Okay? And it's only when it's relaxed it will become stable. And it's only when it's stable it will become clear. And it will only become clear when you can bear the boredom of nothing is happening. You think that nothing is happening. You know when people come and say nothing is happening in my meditation. That means you're asleep. I mean how many thousands of thoughts happen in your meditation? How many thousands of sensations happen in, happen in your meditations? How many thousands of perceptions happen while you are sitting? You hear the person talking, maybe there's another noise, maybe there's a smell, maybe it's hot, maybe it's cold. And then people go, and nothing happens in my meditation. But it's in this kind of sign of meditation we start to understand all I am is a dynamic flow of experiences. That's all I am. There's no essence, there's no I, there's no me in there to whom this is all happening. And that's so liberating to see that. I don't need to manipulate anything. You know? I only have to be present. And when you're present, and when the, when the mind becomes stable, and then it becomes clear, and then it knows by itself what brings happiness and what brings suffering. Yeah? <clears throat> so, but all these methods, they can totally destroy you if you don't know how to apply them in the right way. You know, this is why teachers, Sangha, it can, all these things, especially Mahayana, it can totally increase your neuroses of I'm no good because I don't put other people's happiness in front of mine. I don't deserve to be happy. It's exactly Mahayana, you know. When you turn it into this kind of masochistic, um, what else are they called? Like martyr kind of mood. Yeah. It's not what it's meant. As you said, as I had said, first you start to take care of, of yourself. Yeah, so you start small. So it's like, you know, there's so many traps in this spiritual practice because it has effects. Yeah. So the trap of but vipassana is makes you very peaceful. And then you get attached to that. You don't want to go home anymore. Yeah. You come home, the moment you open the door, and then you know, the kids kind of burnt the pizza and the, the, you know, the stove is like full of dirt and it's burned in and you smell it and you're like, ah! You destroyed my peace of mind. <laughs> <laughs> I tell you, if you develop some peace in this retreat or in some other retreat, in order to go home happily, uh, what you need to do, you have to, in the last session or on your way home, imagine your house in a huge mess. It's true. Half burned down, whatever. <laughs> then you come home and you go, oh, actually, it's not so bad. <laughs> but if you expect that your kids, if you have them, you know, get total order and this and that, <laughs> it's not going to work. So this is skillful thinking. Huh? You know, the problem is I'm very hard on hearing. So then when you say something, I can't understand you. So she we kind said, of... Uh, she said like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Like a self-fulfilling prophecy. Self-fulfilling prophecy? No, 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 no. This is... You see, if there would be self-fulfilling prophecies, we would all be happy. <laughs> Your house would always be perfect, you know, because you imagine the self-fulfilling prophecy. You imagine that your house will be in order. Then if that's if you have the if you have the strength of having a self-fulfilling prophecy, then your house will be in order every time you come home. Is it like this? No. 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 Exactly. Okay. But I have to ask you as guests not to ask questions because otherwise we get uh, distracted in other things, okay? Okay. Then next one. But in order to relax the gaze. So so again he comes, you know, he says first do this, like you are Focus and you cast downwards, you concentrate on yourself. But in order to relax the gaze, because then you become too tense. For a short while I should look around and if someone appears in my field of vision, I should look at him and say, welcome. Okay, so uh, this would be kind of the Mahayana way. Even if you are in, a, in silence, um, you know, you would still say hello, but you would not start chatting with the people. Okay. 
So you would still, you know, if they ask the question, maybe they, you know, where, what's the way to this, or very, very quietly say, look, I'm sorry, I'm in a retreat, I'm in silence. It's a bit difficult here because it's also a hotel. You know, it was easier in Tuval, but no, Tuval also was like we had hotel guests. No. Uh, also, yeah, yeah, we, but they were other guests. I had them as my neighbors sometimes. In Tuval, they were other guests. Not up in the way we had the talks, you know, but in the way the rooms were. So, don't take it to the extreme. To check if there is any danger on the path, I should look again and again in the four directions. To rest, I should turn my head around and then look behind me. Okay, so it's just like how we, how we walk around, mindfully. Having examined both ahead and behind, I should proceed to either come or go. Being aware of the necessity for such mindful alertness, I should behave like this in all situations. Once having prepared for an action with the thought, my body will remain in such a way, then periodically I should look to see how the body is being maintained. So this is for the people who are very body orientated, that you know, not sitting like this, not sitting like that, so that you're not damaging your body, that you keep the body in a good way. Also, when people do extreme sports, then that's also good, you know, is it really good for the body? With the utmost effort, I should check to see that the crazed elephant of my mind is not wandering off, but is bound to the great pillar of thinking about Dharma. So what he talks about is the mindfulness of body, like before, yeah, we have the four mindfulnesses. First, the easiest one is mindfulness of body, knowing what the body is doing, sitting, walking, standing, lying down, okay? So the difference between us and the Buddha is that we don't know when we sit in walking, lying down. Um, the Buddha knows when we sit in walking, lying down. Yeah. We think we know, but we don't. How many of you, until now, were aware that you were really aware that you were sitting? No, oh, I didn't. Okay, good. Really aware. Because last uh, uh, pains. This is why so you're aware sorry. of the pain, but you're not aware of I am the body is sitting. Okay, yes. that's different. So that's a different. I'm aware of the pain. What, what is the difference between saying to myself I am sitting and to be aware of, of being sitting? Because I am sitting. Um, is this awareness? Yeah. You're not aware. You are not aware, you are somewhere else. Knowing that you're sitting. Yesterday we did the meditation. And I said, you know, just know that you are sitting. Know it directly. You cannot talk about what is the difference. You can only feel the difference. Because until now you didn't know that you were sitting. Knowing, aware, being aware, you know. It's not there. There's other things that are there. But the knowing that you're sitting is not there. Then when you start meditating, when you just, okay, just let maybe close your eyes, go into your mind, go into your mind, everybody, not just her, <laughs> go into your mind and go, the body is sitting. And know it directly. Okay, it's enough. Did you feel a difference? Yeah. It's a different feeling to it, knowing something, being connected with something. Yeah? So this is what you learn, this is what you learn in the Vipassana sheets. Mindfulness of body, mindfulness of sensations, mindfulness of mind states, and mindfulness of phenomena. To really know what's going on. We are lost in thoughts. Of course now you are you're listening to me. So, huh? The mindfulness of the body is not always connected to the sensations. So I sit, mindfulness of the body, but the moment that I concentrate on sitting, I concentrate on the sensation, right? That my body is on the pillow, yeah. how it feels. Yeah. So I mean, the mindfulness of body sitting is much closer than the mindfulness of sensations. They go in steps, yeah? yeah. So first we train the mind just always to know what the body is doing. That's what he's saying here. Yeah. Yeah? Having examined both, uh, how do, uh, then I should look to see how the body is being maintained. 
Is it sitting? Is it walking? Is it lying down? Yeah, but this sensation is about the sensation of... Uh, um, uh, I feel it... Um, um, good, not good, the natural... Pleasant, not pleasant, pleasant, natural. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's not like the body sensation. It's, huh? it's, it's also it's coming from the body, but it can be also from, from the mind. Yeah, totally. Yeah, yeah. You have body sensation, you have mental sensation, and there are only of three kinds: mental, uh, pleasant, unpleasant, and neutral. Okay. With the utmost effort, I should check to see that the crazed elephant of my mind is not wandering off, but is bound to the great pillar of thinking about Dharma. So that's the mindfulness, knowing where we want to go. I want to be happy, I don't want to suffer. And why do I want this? Because I want to be a benefit to all beings. So you see, for us unrealized beings, this is why the verse is there, because we're not aware of that. Most of the time is, we, you know, aware and not aware. Being aware kind of influences our reaction, yeah? Like for example, now we, the, automatic, the automatic pilot is me, I, ego team, yeah? We don't need to think about this because we've been training that ego to look after itself for centuries, for lives after life after life after life. Now when you have children, that ego automatically expands. You don't need to do anything, you don't need to train that. It's enough to think this is my child. It might not be your child, you don't know. As I said, it could have been exchanged in the hospital. Uh, but when you think this is my child, your concern for happiness that is a, a childless person is only for me expands onto the children automatically. Yeah? Now, what we do here almost a little bit maybe superficially at the beginning, we expand it to all sentient beings because we have had contact with them since beginning this time, like many, many times already. And they say every being has been a good person to you. I'm not saying not you. Every, be every being at one point has helped you. Every being has been very kind to you at one point. Every being also has been very unkind to us, that is true. But since we don't want to develop compassion, we think in this way and not in the other way. And anyway, as we said yesterday, somebody who's unkind to you actually does you a better favor if you are set out on, on making your mind courageous and practicing patience. So somebody who is unkind to you actually is making you a better favor because somebody who's kind to you, you don't need to practice, it's very pleasant, you develop attachment, they stop being kind to you, you develop aversion and anger towards them. Kind people are sometimes very dangerous. <laughs> okay? Somebody who is unkind to you, no attachment, you know, perfect, perfect uh, object to practice. You will be able, if you continue to practice, open up your heart towards that person. Then you will have love for that person without wanting to possess the person, but just wanting them to be happy. They're kind to you, okay? They're not kind to you, it doesn't matter. So, on a spiritual path, these so-called friends, who are very kind to us, who always do what we want them to do, they're not that terribly helpful. They're just pleasant, but they're not very helpful, you know, if you want to advance on the path. And this is what we're trying to do, isn't it? We're trying to move away from everybody that kind of brings up my aversion, uh, because they make my life difficult, and we're trying to be together only with those that we like and where it's easy to be with them. That is very nice and very good for very weak people in order not to bring up your anger. But it's not fitting for a spiritual practitioner. <coughs> yeah. You need to go where the difficulties lie. Otherwise, your whole life you remain on the green slope. You know, you never get to get the pleasure of being able to zoom down on the black slope when you go skiing. Because when you know how to ski, wow, I tell you, there is no higher pleasure than that, isn't it? Yes. yes. <laughs> and people pay a lot of money for that, you know, the equipment, the, the, the lift, the gun.
go get in there. You wait hours sometimes to go up these days. I'm so happy I don't have to go skiing anymore. I was in a skiing resort last winter and I saw the queue in front of the cable car to go up. I thought, like, oh my God, I'm happy that I don't have to go up there. I don't need it anymore. I don't need it anymore. I, you know, I don't miss it. This is the nice thing. I really don't miss it. At the beginning of my becoming a nun, I missed it very much. Now I don't miss it anymore. So I'm very happy. Yes, and it destroys the mountains. Huh? They look terrible in the summer also. What? This kind of ski, like the slope ski, it destroys the mountains. Yeah, yeah. It looks terrible yeah. in the summer. Because they make artificial snow, you know, I mean, totally. how crazy can it be with water, you know, and the ice machines and then they... Oh, yeah. 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 It's terrible. Mm -hmm. It's really terrible, the whole scheme. But this, I just use it as an example, okay? Because we need to know, by the way, if you want to practice Dharma, you need to know pleasure. You need to have a happy mind. You need to have access to pleasure, otherwise you cannot... The, the, the wish to, to, to have deeper pleasure will not develop. Yeah? It's very important that you know pleasure. Because then you can also, you know, then you can see the... the you, okay, I was just talking now the pleasure of going down. But then as a Dharma practitioner, you start to look about the suffering going up. You know? And as, as, uh, as Luna says, the, the destroying the nature, destroying the nature, you know, like being very harmful for the animals who live on the mountain and all this. Then you start to be able to abandon your pleasure with a happy mind. So Itzik finished skiing. <laughs> Because he still goes. You still have to have a pleasure, no? <laughs> but you knew it, you know it, you had it, you know. So going again and again is biting the hook, needing it. Saying, no, I don't need it anymore, that is then, uh, you know. And then of course when we hear that, then we think that my life will become terribly boring. Ah, I'm not allowed to do this, I'm not allowed to do that. No. Do the people who Practice these things. Do they do they appear bored to you? Do they appear unhappy? And oh, I'm missing out on so many things. I can't <laughs> see, you know. So take note. This is why we need the masters. You know, they sit in their room the whole day, being totally happy, being able to inspire others. They don't need anything. Yeah. No, maybe they are avoiding. Oh, do you know that they are? Because when you invite them to come and see something, they come with you in order to please you. They do come. And also, because I, you know, again, I don't know if they are avoiding, but they don't seem to me that they are avoiding. You know? And again, it's not about them, it's about me. So, uh, maybe they are avoiding, I don't know. But I just see they're so... Needless. As I said yesterday, this Lama, the first thing, the first English words he learned was, doesn't matter. You know, you do something inappropriate, it doesn't matter. No, he was not saying that in a gentleman way, because you asked the question, do you think that, that those people are uh, boring because they are yeah. not mindful? But you only know whether they're boring or not when you get to know them. This is what I mean. Otherwise, how can you know? you know? So if you don't know them, it's difficult to say. So some people here were nodding because they... No, but do, do, do I come across boring for you? <laughs> <laughs> because I don't go skiing anymore and I go... Put, imagine, I'm here in Israel, I don't go swimming. And I, I, was, I was such a water person and I don't miss it. Do I feel depressed because of that? Do you, do, I, do, do you think I'm missing out on something? Yeah. You see, once you start working with your mind, I tell you, your boredom is finished. If you really have the courage to look at the states of your mind, you can love so much because we are, I am so stupid. <laughs> you know? The things my mind is telling me sometimes, it is so ridiculous. I don't need movies anymore. <laughs> you know, I can save a lot of money. You do become, when you start practicing these things and working with your mind, you do become non-needy. 
I have such a, you know, we are so needy people. I need this, I need that. And then whatever is there is okay. I'm not saying I'm the 